Hello everyone. Welcome to the Blue Cube channel. In this video, I will teach you how to rig a character. In the previous lessons, if you recall, we created separate layers for each body part of the character. We also learned how to swap and change the states of the character's hands and lips. Now, we're going to rig the character so that we can animate its body parts. The first step in rigging the character is to ensure all body parts are converted into symbols. This means, based on what you learned earlier, you need to right-click on each part of the character and convert it into a symbol. If I look into the library now, you'll see that all parts have been converted into symbols. To convert any part, simply select it and press F8 to turn it into a symbol. Since I've already converted everything into symbols, I don't need to do this step again now. The next step is to adjust the anchor points. If I select the free transform tool and click on any part, you'll see a central point on it, which is the anchor point. We need to position this as a joint. Watch as I click here to see the inner details of the shapes. I'll zoom in a bit, select the part using the free transform tool, and place the anchor point at the joint position. For example, I'll set it here so that the leg can bend from this point. The same applies to the ankle. I'll select the character's shoe, identify its central point, and move it to this position so the ankle can rotate from here. You need to do this for every part. Select the shape and position the anchor point accordingly. Let me show you how I adjust the anchor points for each body part. To make the character more visible, I'll change the background color of the document. Now, for the character's head, I'll move the anchor point to the neck area so the head can rotate from there. Let's test it now to ensure all anchor points are correctly placed. Once I've confirmed the anchor points are positioned properly, I'll click this button again to return to the previous view and see the shapes. I'll press Ctrl plus 1 to view the entire character. Now I'll click on the topmost layer, create a new layer, and name it Control. In the Control layer, I'll create a circle to later control the rigged character. After creating the circle, I'll separate each part of the character. I'll click and drag them apart. Hold shift while dragging to ensure the shapes are separated along a straight line. Next, I'll select the control layer and place the circle at the top. I'll make sure it's perfectly centered. Now, I'll hold Alt and Shift to create a duplicate of the circle while keeping it aligned. I'll need two circles for controlling the character. Once both circles are ready, I'll convert them into symbols. After completing these steps, 
I'll select the Bone tool. If you don't see the Bone tool, you can find it in this section. It's important to follow these steps precisely because the order of operations is crucial. I'll left click on the bottom circle and drag upwards to create a bone connecting the circle to this part. I'll then click and drag to the next section and release. I'll ensure the click and drag action ends precisely where the anchor points are placed. Let me zoom in a bit and continue using the bone tool for the other sections. Pay close attention to how I create the bones for each part. If a part shifts during rigging, it means it wasn't converted into a symbol, and you'll need to convert it. I'll continue rigging. I'll press Ctrl plus 1 again to see the entire workspace. As you can see, we've connected all parts of the character. Now, I need to align all parts back to their original positions. I'll use the Zoom tool to zoom in and the Free Transform tool to move each part back into place. For instance, I'll position the character's head and then place the lips back where they belong. Here, you'll notice the lips are behind the character's head. To fix this, I'll right-click on the lips, go to Arrange, and select Bring to Front to move them to the topmost layer. Now you can see that the lips are positioned on top of the head. I will move the rest of the parts back to their original positions. For the hand, which is positioned under the body, I'll use the Arrange tool again. After placing all the character's parts in their correct positions, we need to test the character. I'll select the Selection tool, move the head, and see how it moves. The character's head moves like this, but the bone is misplaced. I'll zoom in a bit. To ensure the bone is correctly positioned, I'll select the lips with the free transform tool and adjust its pivot point to align with the lips. Now it's fixed, so I'll check the other parts of the character. To ensure the arm stays in place when moving, I'll select its bone with the selection tool and set the speed value to zero. This bone is now properly configured. I need to set the speed to zero for these two bones as well. I'll slightly adjust their positions to align them in a straight line. Now I'll set the speed to zero again.
Let's test the character's movements once more. As you can see, the bones are working correctly. I'll zoom in on the character's legs. To fine tune the leg movement, I'll first enable the outline view and adjust the anchor point to the center. Testing again, you can see that the legs are also functioning well. We can also create rotation for the character using the selection tool. I'll select the top layer. As I mentioned in previous lessons, when rigging a character, a layer called armature is created, which contains all the layers. Next, I'll hide or remove the green circles used to control the character. To do this, I'll select them and set their alpha value to zero in the object settings. This way, the controls remain functional, but the green circles are hidden. I'll repeat this process for the other circle. Now I'll create a simple animation with this character. So, friends, in this lesson you learned how to rig and animate a character effectively. In future lessons, I'll teach you how to animate walking and other movements. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for liking the videos. See you in the next one. Goodbye for now.